Hello everybody, this is Taka. In this video, what we are going to be doing is talking about Chrome OS Flex. Uh, simply put, this video did not go how I would have liked it to. I've installed Chrome OS Flex on quite a few different laptops, a desktop, and just overall there's always been something to go wrong and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video but first we must thank the sponsor of today's video Linode as you can see here I'm using Linode to host techhut.tv our main website and it has been running very well for me if I go up here to create and create a new Linode you can see how easy it is to spin up your own virtual private server you have a ton of Linux distributions to choose from and as far as region goes, there's probably a server that is moderately close to you. If we go down here to shared CPU, you can see that it starts as little as $5 a month, which really ain't too bad at all. And if we go up here to marketplace, you can easily set up all of these services with automated scripts that get everything set up for you, including Nextcloud, WordPress, Minecraft, CSGO, Discourse, and a whole lot more. So if you're interested in this, make sure you check out the link down below for a $100 60-day credit. Essentially, Chrome OS Flex is just a version of Chrome OS that gives you the ability to install it on other hardware. So then that way you are not limited to getting a Chromebook that will probably have an Intel Celeron processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and storage as low as 16 gigabytes. Or even worse, buy a high-powered machine with Chrome OS installed on it. In short, Google basically just decided that most people seem to sign on to their computer, open up a web browser, and stay in that environment anyways, so why not just make it the entire operating system? That is basically Chrome OS. One thing that you'll get while getting a Chromebook as compared to this Flex version is Android app support, and that alone gone from this really limits us with our choices of what we could do with the system. But being that one of the primary points of Chrome OS is to run on weaker hardware, in theory really nice because you can use it to revive old hardware. Or at least that's the long term goal because as of now the device compatibility list is rather thin. Now the installation process for this is kind of weird. You can't can't really go and grab just your normal ISO image. What you have to do is plug in a USB to your computer and actually use a Chromebook recovery tool Chrome extension to go ahead and flash the USB with Chrome OS Flex. The process is pretty simple. You just go to your devices and instead of actually picking a device, there is a Chrome OS Flex option. And then you begin the process and you boot into it like you would any other installation. A main difference is this hardly gives you any installation options. You can't select what hard drive you want it to be on. If you want a dual boot, you have to install this first and then whatever else after. It's literally a few clicks and then it's installing and that is it. My first attempt at this was installing it on a really old, absolutely piece of garbage laptop, and it just would not boot at all, stayed on the Chrome OS splash screen, and that is about it. And from there, I decided to try out a really high-powered gaming laptop. It would have made for a super cool video title. And with this one, it wouldn't recognize my SSD at all, which isn't a surprise to me, because even on Windows, I do have to load in special drivers. But luckily, I was able to boot into a live environment similar to what you get on a lot of Linux distributions where I could actually go in and try it out. And after I signed into my Google account and booted it up, it was actually a really nice experience using Chrome OS on a 2K display looks really good. Everything was super snappy. The general use of it was completely fine, but I did have to plug it into ethernet because the Wi-Fi drivers simply were not working. And of course, being that this isn't a live environment, I couldn't really do anything like try to install the Linux virtualization within the terminal. And then I went ahead and tried it out on this uh, ThinkPad T450 right here. This is honestly a phenomenal machine, especially if you're somebody who's in the market for like a budget laptop. You could get one of these with an Intel i5, good amount of RAM for like two, $300, not a bad deal. And as you can see here, this is currently running Chrome OS Flex. Now, when it comes to the base functionality of what Chrome OS is supposed to be, which is using web apps and Chrome OS itself, the device performs very well. Applications open up no problem. Uh, it does have kind of high resource consumption compared to what I'm used to when it comes to the RAM, but I didn't really notice that actually playing around with the machine. It's probably one of those things where unused RAM is wasted RAM. And Chrome itself is known to be a RAM hog anyway, but 
again, I didn't have any major performance or stuttering or lagging or anything like that actually playing around in the system. I do actually like how intuitive it is and for just regular web browser type things, it works perfectly fine. When it comes to the basic usage on this machine, Wi-Fi actually worked, which was nice. Granted, if I'm to go to my university, for example, and try to connect to their Wi-Fi, which requires some extra configuration and a login splash screen, uh, it's kind of a hit or miss. It has problems when it shouldn't, and sometimes it works. It's really weird. Now, as far as the uh, Linux experience on this bad boy, which for me is something that I would need because there's one or two Linux applications that I would need to actually be able to use a laptop like this on a daily basis. When I fired up the terminal to go ahead and set up Linux for the first time, I was expecting it to fail because I tried this out a few months ago when this first released and it just wouldn't work for nothing, but this time it did. Linux actually installed and I was able to like load up HTOP, uh, do basic apt type things. And then on this device specifically, I went and installed GIMP. GIMP performed very well, quick load times and things like that. The only issue I had with that was uh, the menus, for example. I opened up a drop down menu and closed the application without closing the drop down menu. It would like just stay open. It's probably some weird issue with the virtualization, but it was kind of annoying. If you like clicked on the setting, it would go away, but that was just one thing. Uh, installing Caden Live through the apt package manager was an absolute uh, nightmare. It, it, it just doesn't work. It's It just flickers all over the place. You can't load media in there properly. It just did not work. And I was able to get Caden Live to work a lot better on the desktop we're going to be jumping into in just a sec. It's actually this little mini PC right here. But even if I was to get Caden Live working on this machine, it's just not powerful enough for the workload that I want to give up for video editing. But again, for just Chrome OS, this did meet its goal of, I don't really want to say bringing this back to life because it was never dead, but it works. It works. Granted, it would be better just to throw a Linux distro on it. And it's from there we get into the mini PC. This little gaming PC, I have a, a video coming out on this uh, pretty soon, so do make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell. Uh, it, it, it worked pretty good. First of all, the Wi-Fi in it didn't work, which, it, which is a huge issue to me. Um, it, it's a desktop, so it's not generally a big deal, but it seems like they're just a lot of these devices, the Wi-Fi just did not work. And I'm pretty sure Chrome OS uses a Linux base, and for Wi-Fi cards like this that I know have good Linux drivers, it's just kind of weird that they're not included. But actually firing up the machine and basic usage, just like with this ThinkPad laptop, were completely fine. But I did run into my first little issue when I uh, tried to do a screen recording because I wanted to try to produce this section of the video directly off of this, which did not work. So what I did was ran some Geekbench tests just to kind of compare the Linux virtualization environment to Windows and Linux just installed bare metal on this machine. And I'm just going to play you what I recorded. I do note you'll see the major issues with this recording. All right, we are on this system. And as you can see here, I'm making myself a, a, a little bit bigger. I'm recording completely on this device. I have my microphone hooked directly to it, and I'm using the uh, built-in screen recording software. And this is just the uh, the camera utility that I'm gonna use as my little face window up in the top corner. Like I said, the main thing I've done so far is uh, set up the Linux environment. The only thing I've installed is uh, HTOP just so I could kinda monitor what's going on here. And let's do a wgit and paste that on in. Oh, I can tell this is pretty close to my other scores. I'm going to log in real fast. There we go. All right. And there's a definitely a performance hit, but not significant. You can see here, these last three scores are all from this same mini PC. Just regular Linux. I think this was Ubuntu does extremely well on this hardware. Uh, and there is a slight performance hit of this uh, Chrome OS virtualization compared to Windows. But I mean, it's it's not too bad. So the Geekbench scores were kind of cool. It's nice to see that it's not a huge, huge performance loss. But as you could probably hear, the audio was absolute utter garbage. And I was using the same mic I'm using now with a little audio interface just plugged into the USB. And I did record a lot more, but it just cut out completely after a while. So just that alone, not being able to use a microphone reliably with the device is just a huge 
that's like a line that I can't really go past, especially with what I do on this channel and with my work in general. And if that alone would have worked, I would have like done that thing where I tried to force myself to use this for a month to do a dedicated review, but no. But with that, I did have some uh, additional success with the Linux applications. GIMP did have the same issue with the menu dropdown, but it functioned completely fine. Uh, after much tinkering and experimentation, I figured out flat packs work slightly better than the uh, repository packages and app images on Chrome OS work very, very well. The app image of Caden Live actually worked good enough to the point where I was able to drop in footage, scrub through and make some initial cuts. The little footage with the crappy audio I just played was actually edited on this machine in Chrome OS. And that's when I discovered that the audio was bad and cut out most for most of the footage. Now gaming, this is technically a little gaming machine and Chrome OS Flex is a uh, no fun companion to the experience. First, I was a little optimistic and tried to install Steam through a flat pack. That, yeah, I mean, Steam installed, it allowed me to install a game, but that just did not work at all. When I tried to open up a game like Splitgate, which I know runs very well on this machine, the little uh, FPS thing was giving me one frame per second, and I did have the little screen recording, the Chrome OS screen recorder running, and this is what I got right here. So um, it looks like crap here, and that's basically the same experience I got trying to get characters to move or anything like that. If you know what the issue is, let me know. I couldn't figure it out. So uh, in thinking that it might've been the flat pack, I went ahead and re uh, removed it and installed the 32-bit uh, libraries, everything Steam needs to run on a Chromebook, technically. Installed Steam using the Debian package directly from their website. It opened up. It did allow me to get a little bit further into the game, but it really wasn't, wasn't a success at all. And it was the same experience with other games. I tried uh, CSGO, which is a game that is a good benchmark because it runs on just about everything. And it, it wouldn't load at all. So that ruled out that use case. Just overall, right now, if you want to do anything beyond web browsing and web apps, Chrome OS Flex is a bad option. If your hardware is just garbage, there are better Linux alternatives, in my opinion, that you could just install a Chrome web browser on and have a decent time. And if you have moderately decent hardware, in my opinion, it's just kind of a waste of time. And even on their device compatibility page, you go through that and search up some of those laptop models, and a lot of them are Chrome OS laptops anyways. Now again, I mentioned earlier, this is a early stage of Chrome OS Flex, and just even my short-term experience messing with this laptop a couple months ago versus a day, there's some things that are working that were not working. So they are working to develop it, and hopefully in the future, if some of those things work that I mentioned, if I could get a couple Linux apps to work perfectly and have a smooth gaming experience, I mean, it, it might be a feasible option for a lot of people out there. Especially if you're already intertwined in Google's ecosystem and you use like Google Docs, Gmail, and all that. So with that, I do hope you enjoyed this video of Chrome OS Flex develops to the point where it is a very stable and uh, reliable operating system. Is it something that you might consider going for? With all that, as always, all the resources and websites, anything I mentioned will be linked down below. So you could go ahead and give this a spin for yourself if you're interested in trying it out. If you do have a really good success, please let us know down below additionally what hardware you're using as that will just be kind of interesting. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.